Body bags were whole lies. Hey, I'm Sam. I'm your Thursday guy for body bags, and this week I am doing Phantasm Four: Oblivion. It's pretty good. It is, of course, the fourth installment of the fr the Phantasm uh, franchise. Or Sega. It's not really a franchise, I guess. It's just five movies all together. There ended up being a fifth one. Um, and this, as this, um, I can't just go and like you know tell you everything about this movie because because there's obviously it's the fourth movie, right? So before I go on. If you have, if you've never seen any of the Phantasms, watch the other ones, one, two, three, and and, that, and then you know after that, this one. They might be on Tubi, but I'm sure you could find them somewhere to watch. Um, so if you don't want to know, then you know, click off and then maybe come back after you've seen one to three, or something like that. If you have seen or you don't care, Phantasm Four, you have your main characters, you know, still alive: Reggie, Mike, um, and Mike is still being pursued by the Tall Man. Except now he knows that he has something in his in his skull that the Tall Man wants. And what Mike is doing in this is not only running away, not necessarily that he's able to run away from him, but also trying to figure out who the tall man is and like what he what he's from and like you know, dot dot dot. So there's a lot of flashbacks and there's a lot of um, time travel. Well, not a lot. There's like one actual time travel scene where he ends up going back to the 1800s for like five seconds, but he ends up getting spooked off and goes back. If you watch the movie and then see how it goes, he should have stayed. Mm, he should have stayed. Anyway. The movie is an hour and 30 minutes. Of course, Don Coscarelli's still directing it. Came out in 98. I probably should have said this before, uh, before I started saying what the movie was about. I mean, that's effectively what, what the movie is, right? Yeah. Um... Um, I think one thing that I really like about this movie is that going back to the first Phantasm, when they, when Don made that movie, there was a lot of footage that he didn't use for it. And so that kind of ended up being shelved, whether it was going to be used for like a deleted scene montage or like, you know, maybe he could find a way to use it later on. Phantasm 4 uses it, or, you know, at the very least, he uses some of it. A lot of, um, a lot of, uh, scenes in Phantasm 4 were shot for Phantasm 1. And so it's, it's pretty cool seeing, uh, it's pretty cool seeing, uh, Mike, you know, old, and then, you know, young Mike and whatnot. It's not that he's old. It's, um, he's like in his 30s or whatever when he's doing this. Or maybe 40s. But, um... It's pretty cool because it's still the same actor. Now, you know, Phantasm 2, Mike is played by someone else. But... 1, 3, 4, and 5... Um, Mike is played by the same actor. So that's pretty cool when you watch Phantasm 4. That, um... You can see, you know, scenes that were for Phantasm 1 in Phantasm 4, and you just see kind of like back to back sometimes, just like a young Mike and then a, a here Mike, an older Mike, that's better. Um, one thing I thought that was interesting about this because for about 20 years, this was the last Phantasm movie. And then in 2015, Phantasm 5 came out and it was not Don Coscarelli that made it, but he allowed it kind of thing. 
it's, you know, Phantasm's Don's baby. He's not just gonna let some random come about. Well, I don't know, maybe. Just come about and just make something out of Phantasm. Although, I would love... If there was anything, because here's the thing, right? I want to be a movie director. And if there was anything, not that I would want to remake it, but kind of like just make something of it. Kind of like use it or whatever. Maybe like a love letter of some kind to it kind of thing. It would be Phantasm because I, the Phantasm is like my favorite. I swear it's my favorite. <laughs> um, um, I remember when I first went to watch the first one. It was in the theater. Um, some theater was playing it uh, one or two times, and we, me and Dad saw it one of those times. And then a little after that, we ended up watching two and three in the same night, and then four and five on uh, on another night. And I just, you know, kind of like that weird marathon. Um, and I, I, just, I thought it was great. I really love the story. And I guess over time, I've kind of always kind of thought of, like, how do you, like, not replicate that, but, like, how do you make something like that that's not that, you know? I mean, obviously, when it's all said and done, it's going to end up looking like it. It's just, you know, how are you going to end up phrasing it? Like, what are you trying to make of it? Is this try supposed to be a love letter? Or is it supposed to be a remake, a ripoff, right? And which I would want it to be a, a love letter. But, you know, anyway, um, one thing I thought that was pretty interesting about this, because storyline was, I'm gonna, I'm, this might be my longest one just because I want to talk about storyline stuff. So if you've never, if, if you've never seen any of them, go watch them, okay? Now, go watch them. I'm just gonna go kind of like on a tangent, not tangent, I'm just gonna be going off right now. So, you know, you might not be able to catch up or you might be like, what, what are you talking about? Go watch the movies. Alright, um, the, I, the way that Phantasm 4 ends up putting it is that you, it doesn't like just say, tell you, but you know, you know of the term and then five, and then five comes out and then you kind of like, okay, so yeah, that's how that would work. It's, it's a multiverse, I guess actually a multiverse, or at least it could be a multiverse, um, in which the tall man goes world to world, destroying it, and the only thing stopping him, or the only thing that he needs, is basically the golden orb that's in Mike's head. So that's why he's always after Mike, and, like, all the dreams are different worlds and whatnot. So, like, Phantasm 1 was a dream. Um, the flashbacks in 2 was a dream. The ending of uh, Phantasm 2 was a dream. Oh, not the ending, my bad. The ending of Phantasm 1, the beginning of Phantasm 2 was a dream. The mic that we know and love, effectively, essentially, that version of him is 2, 3, and 4. And then, I guess, 5 a little bit. That version of him. That's one way of looking at it, in which case, after this, because, alright, well, I, I would say that's one way of looking at it because of the ending in four where the tall man ends up getting the orb going through a portal and then uh reggie attempt uh, uh reggie attempts to follow him goes through the portal too and then after that you see one of the old um scenes from a uh, phantasm one that wasn't used and it's um uh, mike walking through the town i mean it's, it's nighttime and whatnot and reggie's driving by and he um he gets in the car with Reggie and they're driving and while um they're going going up um while they're going you could hear um uh, Mike from Phantasm 4 and Reggie from Phantasm 4 say like one line and like you could see them like noticing it and it's like obviously not that they are they're actually hearing it because real life real time that was supposed to be something else he just ended up using it to be a certain way um, what it ends up being, how that kind of scene goes about, from how I view it, is that they, what they could have done going onward, or at least not going onward, but what you could have known, what they could have said, was that 
the Mike and Reggie that you see at the end um four was basically about to be the new cycle and he has already had all these dreams and is like I'll beat him kind of thing. I'll beat him we'll, we'll get him we'll win I know what's coming I'll win kind of thing but then you know you know find <laughs> Phantasm 5 comes out and that just kind of keeps on going with Phantasm 4 so they don't like do that whole thing in which case would have been not weird but now thinking about it would have been a little weird because Terminator did that or at least tried to do that with uh with, with the Genesis I think so um yeah maybe not that they were gonna be able to actually do anything unless they replaced or whatever <sighs> I think a good way of maybe doing it would be that um well, I don't know I don't want to go and just spout out ideas I'll keep my ideas to myself and I'll try to work something out with them but um I guess the general idea is that it seems like every world that the tall man goes to, the mic that he gets is from a specific time period. So there's a shot in Phantasm IV where Mike, where, where Mike has a dream of the tall man dr uh, dr uh, drilling something into Mike in like w Civil War era. And then, you know, there's that in the 70s. I always kept on thinking that was like, I'm sorry, whenever I watch Phantasm, well, not whenever, but, like, whenever I'm thinking of it, it always just seems like that's supposed to be, like, the 30s or 40s. <laughs> no, no, that's the 70s. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Um, no, that's 70s. Um, never mind, that idea won't really work out. Uh, or you could do it, like, a prequel, I guess, in which case it takes place in the 30s or 40s, but, um, scratch that. The end goal point that I was thinking was that maybe you could have a Phantasm that takes place during the 80s. But it wouldn't really work out because I was thinking that it was like, you know, get him there and then get him there and then get him there and then get him there kind of thing. And it's like, maybe, maybe what would be better is if he takes place nowadays. Phantasm would. I don't know. But that could be interesting, I guess. Um, I don't think there's anything else I want to say about this movie. I really like it. This is, um, if I had to rank the Phantasm movies right now, it's probably one, four, two, five, three. Yeah. Three is okay, but three is basically just your typical put the movie on and like, you know, with your friends and it's all fun and yeah, hey, it's pretty cool, yeah, it's pretty cheesy, yay. Typical eighties, nineties movie. I think it was more eighty well no, that was nineties, my bad. That was early nineties. Still. That's basically uh Boogins and uh the stuff kind of like time period. Um Two is pretty good. It's just the only problem with two is that they replaced the actor that played Mike. Although I would say that could have been really cool if they had Brad Pitt play Mike because he almost played Mike. That would have been hilarious. That would have been pretty cool. But he ended up being played by someone else that's I don't even think relevant today. So that's cool. Um, four, where are we talking about? Four, four is pretty good. One's already a classic, and then five was, you know, five was okay. I like, uh, I like how the storyline went. Some stuff in it was kind of cheesy, but that's kind of how it always is. There's some scenes that are just kind of, like, cheesy, but, it, you know, it's fine. Um, anyway. I'm Sam. I'm your, uh, Thursday guy for body bags. I did Phantasm Oblivion, and if I had to rate the movie right now, I would give this movie an eight- point nine let's go with my only critique being the movie is only one hour and 30 minutes and that mike you know made a fatal mis well not fatal but he made a, a really big mistake that could have changed the whole story could have if only he known but uh i guess that's it 
Have you seen it? Go watch it sometime. I'm just saying. Well, I'll see y'all next week. Goodbye.